So welcome uh, to a final uh, episode of the day, live stream of the day at the, re the U.S. Rowing Convention. I'm Charlotte Pierce with Ready Row USA. I'm the producer, and I'm here with Ted Benford. Hi. It's Hi, good Charlotte. Good to see you again. Oh, it's great to see you, too. Yeah. Thank lot you for big, having me on, this, on your show. Yeah. You're welcome. And uh, Ted's the executive director of Community Rowing, the largest rowing club in is it in the say. world? Hard to say. Yeah, well. We are a, um, Depends on how you measure. We're a large public access <laughs> rowing organization. Yeah. So okay. we serve about uh, 2,500 people on the Charles River through the Harry Parker Boathouse in Sweep and Skull. Sweet. And then we serve around 7,500 kids in the city of Boston um, and potentially the city of Cambridge through uh, programs with their middle schools. So Cambridge has five middle schools mm -hmm. uh, that we hope to serve at some point in 23, and then we serve around 50 public schools uh, with middle school indoor rowing programs with their, in conjunction with the physical education classes. And my program, of course, which is the <laughs> logbook sculling, the log master's sculling. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I like about CRI is so big, so many people, but I was telling you earlier, you know, you don't have silos necessarily. You have ways that you, and you said that was by design, um, ways that the communities cross over. So it's the master scholars, the para, the, the kids. Yep. So tell us a little bit about how you make that happen, the magic happen. Well, one thing that we know about silos is that they can create a lot of very um, uh, focused effort mm -hmm. uh, in excellence. Uh, but silos also have membranes, they have walls. Mm -hmm. And so part of what we looked at were the silos at CRI. Every organization has them. Sure. And part of our efforts around our own inclusion and equity uh, awareness and, and the growth of our understanding of our, the role that we play in DEI uh, meant that we look at our silos and we look at the ways that we've always done it and see if there are better ways to be more inclusive. Uh, which actually enhances the experience for people who row there. Yeah. And so one of the things that we discovered was that removing some silos enabled people to enjoy the, um, the benefits of rowing and connection to people where the individual experience, the transformation that happens on an individual basis mm -hmm. uh, wasn't compromised and in fact was enhanced because more people were given more access to programming across a much broader array of backgrounds, experience, and ability. Right. So it's been a it's been a huge net positive to go through this. And do you have did you have a time frame that you were trying to make that happen in or was it like is it just an ongoing thing or did, did you have to then when you, when you came on what would tenure? Uh, I, I came in uh, I was I, I came to CRI in 16 and I became the executive director in 18. In 18, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So did was there like a <laughs> Learning curve and then uh, massive, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Huge. Yes. yeah. Okay. No, but a big part of um, you know one of the things about uh, our efforts around inclusion is that there really isn't a time frame. It's the it's the action first and learning second. Um, and by that, what what I mean is that uh, we've taken a number of you know sort of organizational risks. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through a full reorganization of our organizational chart and our structures. Uh, we looked at our programming and completely reevaluated our programming, and I can talk more about that mm -hmm. if you want. Um, and then we looked at um, organizational behavior, you know, and, and one, one of the things that we know is that behavior is informed by mindsets, right? Mm -hmm. And so as part of what we try to engender and embody at CRI is a learning mindset. Yeah. And what that means, as we've even learned at the convention, is that uh, don't let the perfect get in the way of the good <laughs> or the great, right? And yeah. so let's... Let's do first and learn from what we're doing. Uh, create small initiatives or pilots that may succeed, may fail. Learn a lot in the process and uh, just keep moving. Keep taking steps towards making CRI as inclusive and as personal um, and as responsive to our communities we can make it. So. Right. And what, what were some of those pilots? Can you give an example yeah, sure. of something? Um, yeah, so we've done a lot. So. Um, when we looked at our programmatic reorganization, uh, one of the things we realized is that at CRI, uh, we have grant-funded programs and we have uh, fee-for-service programs. 
Um, uh, we have a, a boathouse that's beautiful, but it exists in a transportation desert. Uh, we know that uh, everyone at CRI, every program at CRI receives some form of financial aid, whether it's a grant that supports the cost of the program, or in every single fee-for-service program we have, mm -hmm. there are also people that apply and receive uh, a sort of a, a deframement of their costs, right, of the, right. Of the fees. Okay. And so coming out of COVID and thinking about the social justice, um, uh, our, our role in rowing in social justice and in inclusion, mm -hmm. Um, what we decided to do was pilot a program that provided free snacks at CRI. So uh, the I CRI the Fuel Institute, they're great, the bars. <laughs> uh, but we worked in conjunction with U.S. Yeah. Rowing. So I saw Liz Fisco at the convention and we worked with Liz and other uh, nutritionists to understand how to supply uh, an array of pro access to protein, access to carbohydrate, access to glucose. Uh, actual electrolyte powder that is available for anybody, whether the kids want to put 45 scoops in or the regular just sort of two scoops that most people <laughs> do. Uh, so we, we just piloted a program. We handed out uh, over 80,000 snacks at CRI just at our boathouse last year. Uh, we tried a transportation program because of where we are located, uh, where we run a bus from CRI to the city of Boston to a public transit stop uh, and simply offer anyone who wants to come row a chance to get on the bus and come to CRI. And as part of that, we changed our programming structure so that all of our programs started around when the bus arrived, right? So kids are no longer getting on the bus and then coming to a program that is just for them. Yeah. Come to CRI, get off the bus, and they can learn how to row, they can join a competitor program, they can skull, they can sweep, they can do whatever is available to them after school. Erg. They can yeah. erg, yeah. yep. Um, and I think as part of that, the, the, the pilots around um, the removal of, of, of access for people, meaning when we, when we look at our high performance para program, or we look at our adult competitive program, or we look at our youth competitor program, what if we just looked at those as programs as opposed to flagships or as standard bearers for our organization? Yeah and just, just considered them another facet for people to uh, grow through rowing. And, um, and, and what that helped us do was understand that the way people may approach rowing is certainly through a competitive uh, mindset, but there are kids who just love rowing twice a week. They mm -hmm. might be violinists, they might be nerds, they might be, you know, they might just want to row twice and stay inside the rest of the time. And all of those options become available through the changes in the way that we thought about our programming mm -hmm. and then making small decisions, small behaviors that sort of pilot, you know, beta test it. Right. You know, so, yeah. um, so what was some of the, like, when you were changing the mindset and all that, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't want to get into the negatives too much, yeah, sure. but like what, what was some of the pushback? Were there people who like quit in a huff or, you know, like, no, um, so we, we've all been through so much over the past three years, yeah. right? Yeah. And so uh, I think that COVID provided us the opportunity to try different things mm -hmm. to enable people to get on the water safely. You know, your favorite program, the Logbook Sculling Program. Yeah. Um, you know, we had, we had basically 42 boats and we served almost... I don't know, 1,500, 2,000 yeah. people with 20 boats. And, I was and astonished just, yeah. at how well that went. Well, thank you. And I you think know, a lot of clubs here did the same thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. Did, you know? Was there a lot of sharing of best practices with other clubs? Yeah, <laughs> so one of the things that uh, Matt Logan started and I supported uh -huh. and was part of was the um, a weekly call with rowing executive directors around the country when COVID mm -hmm. hit. And so we began um, just debriefing each other from Cal you know, the West Coast to the South to the Northeast to the Midwest. And as part of that, also CRI um, uh, took, a, took sort of a, a, a step towards river cohesion as well and did the same thing in Boston. Yeah. So we invited Cambridge Boat Club, Riverside Boat Club, Union Boat Club to a call about every four weeks during COVID. Mm -hmm. And similar to the executive director call, uh, the River Club's call, we call it now, it's just a loose organization of people sharing ideas, uh, talking about DEI, talking about safety, talking about, you know, the, the, the four or rule in Boston, you know, yeah, we get, we get cold water. That. So, you know, every club handles it differently yeah. and we want people to 
Um, I mean, I have you know. my own boat, but I sort of observe that because I just think, like, what if I went in? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's crazy. And, uh, yeah. you know, I was talking to Tom Rooks yesterday about safety. You know, yeah. he, amazing. Like, God, the Coast Guard experience. Wisdom, He's yeah, very director strong. Director of safety. Deep and, knowledge. And uh, he was saying he'd love to see a PFD on every yep. sculler. Yep. Well, I mean, there are different that. types of PFTs, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, yeah. I mean, our friends down river, Cambridge Book Club. Do you have some examples of those in, at the club? Well, uh, at CRI. I'd love to see one. I mean, I'll wear one. Yeah, I, sure. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it's a great yeah. idea. And certainly when the river, when the water temperatures are the, yeah. what they are. And if you go down to the basin, because I like yeah. go to the basin yeah. and turn around and come back, it's 15K. And, yeah. You know, I get a little bit Splashy, weird splashy. About and, you know, about yeah, yeah. that crossing. It's pretty deep there, isn't it? That's about eight feet. Is, you know, at the basin? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It just seems so much deeper. It's a very broad body yeah, of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, anyway, go uh, ahead. The Cambridge Boat Club is uh, trying a program where um, I believe people um, uh, are wearing PFDs around their waist. I see, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I think I think everybody explores safety and, yeah. and you know, talk about pilots and initiatives and failing fast and trying new things. Sure. Um, uh, you know, safety is at the is a cornerstone yeah. of how we function, and so we we actually focus more on not rowing when you could potentially have an yeah. accident that could be life threatening. So yeah. we actually don't allow people on the water until we're confident that if they did go in, uh, there's a good chance yeah. that they would be able to swim. And, there's and been survive. several times we uh, what is it the, the lightning within 15 minutes or something? Uh, 45. Yeah. 45. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. that yeah. shuts it down. Right? Yeah. So yeah. the biggest question is though. What are you going to do about the goose poop? <laughs> well, uh, Charlotte, I don't know if you know, but we have a, a, a fantastic innovation. It's, it's a room. The, it's the dumper pumper. The dumper is that the uh, Rube Goldberg machine? It is. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I have a video of it on my phone. I'll share it with you. But I, it's, uh, I actually helped make. I think I helped make that video. Yeah, or yeah. anyway, uh, Kane, yeah. the operations director right? of operations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, came give us a demo yeah. and I, I have not since been had the courage to try it myself but I've seen other people it, using it. It, it cleans a, a 15 foot wide dock with one pass. It's so brilliant. It's a pretty effective it, yeah. uh, piece of... Uh, Is it used regularly? Daily. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I didn't... Yeah, yeah. If you go down to our docks in the middle of the day, yeah. anytime that we're roaring, you know, it's, well, uh, it's I, I pick up a broom yeah. once in a while yeah. just to do That's my great. do my part. That's yeah. great. One That's time great. I found a, a goose egg on the dock. Oh my gosh. It was warm. Oh. I know, I felt wow. bad. Because yeah. I, you know, we I are, just put uh, it in the bushes and kind of walked away quickly. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, but anyway. we have to be careful about yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So, um, like, I guess what I wanted to ask you, um, you know, I've been a member for 10 years. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest thing you would wish members would do or could do to help the club run more smoothly or mm -hmm. like do you want to expand i mean like have people go out and recruit or uh, what, what do you wish members could do uh, i think what? um it's a good question i mean i i think that that part of the part of the strength and part of the weakness of our community is that it's so broad yeah right so what what would i like the adults to do versus the kids what would i like the yeah, scholars right. to do versus the sweep rowers but I think that one of the things that we're recognizing is that um, in, in, the, in the process of understanding that once people know things, they can change. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've had um, a number of meetings with different groups within the organization. I'm um, going to meet with our adult sweep rowing community soon. Um, and I think part of that is understanding that as an, as, a, as an organization that's committed to growth, an enormous part of that is learning and exchanging of ideas right so what do I what do I wish the different groups or or mm -hmm. what people at CRI could do um, is take us up on our offer to learn more about the organization and the work we do uh, I think a lot of like a lot of rowing clubs it's difficult for people who come down at five o'clock in the morning to understand what happens at four in the afternoon yeah right and likewise I think um, it's it's difficult for the club to communicate that in a compelling way mm -hmm. so um, whether we tell people, it's whether they hear it, not whether they are listening, exactly. but whether they actually no, internalize exactly it. So uh, they do when there's always when there's some sort of friction or con you know concern about a thing. Um, yeah. But uh, one of the things that we've really um, focused deeply on is that 
uh, we, sh we the only way we can expect change is through educating people and, yeah. and through them understanding <coughs> at, at whatever level they want to understand our organization mm -hmm. that we're here to help them understand the breadth. Um, you can tell people that you serve 10,000 people in the Boston community, but when they look around at CRI, you know, there might only be 200 people there, you know? <laughs> yeah, or and, and, you know, you, just, few, you tell somebody, yeah. I was just talking to somebody the other day, they said, I didn't believe you when you said you put 1,500 people on the water. And, yeah. um, and I said, that's, that's okay. Like, the, you, you don't have to believe us. Yeah. And they said, well, actually, we came down and watched. And, like, it is incredible that kind of like the way that you kicked off the conversation today was those the volume of that happens in very very digestible and approachable pieces mm -hmm. for people groups of six group of eight group of ten maybe mm -hmm. you know our teams are anywhere from 20 to 40 people yeah. but i don't think it's it's pretty rare to see a, a a 400 person field trip at cri and think oh wow this place is a factory you know people are just pumping in yeah. and pumping out. You know, <laughs> lines <scholars>, everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah you know, like like who knew that we had 170 about 175 recreational sweep growers yeah. but they show up in three different times during the day and they don't all show up every single day, right? right? So it's groups of 50, 50 plus people in the morning, midday, yeah. and evening. But that happens in very digestible groups of, you know, they go out in eights, and there might be two eights, there might be 24 out of the 40. Um, and then the kids are here when people are working, and the, the kids are going to school, and there are, you know, hundreds of adults at CRI in the morning. And, and so it's just sort of that idea that our community is built on, um, on the amazing work of our, our coaches and our staff who make it who make the transformation happen individually your um, coaches are amazing well thank you i mean yeah. i you know, just an old lady who rose not very long you know 10 years but it doesn't matter who i go out with you know yeah. it they focus on the on the individual mm -hmm. my progress it's it's astounding to me how they do that. Well, I think one thing that um, we work really hard on is understanding that our mission as an organization um, is founded on the fact that rowing creates transformation and yeah. everybody thinks that it happens for the people we serve. Um, but when you think about what we do, so we provide people relationships, mm -hmm. whether you're a rower or a staff person. Yeah and you become part of a community and you uh, become part of an aware community that wants to be as inclusive as it's capable of and to bring people in from different backgrounds with different opinions and different mindsets. And that occurs with our staff as well as with our community, obviously. And then we develop skills, right? So you come down, you've, you've grown as a rower, you've gained <laughs> skills, right? But, uh, but part of those skills are resilience and part of them are um, uh, communication skills and certainly for kids leadership skills and uh, self-advocacy and um, the types of skills that are lifelong skills yeah and but I our think staff it, develop those too yes, right? right so so they gain that and then the third thing is like geez you know if you go to a rowing program you better get better at rowing right like you better get faster and fitter and healthier but part of fitness is mental fitness and mental yeah. health I'm glad you mentioned and, that um, yeah and a big part of what we're aware of is yeah. that Rowing is incredibly beneficial to the people we serve, but the sense of purpose that our staff have in their work is equally important to the organization, right? So, so uh, I was just talking to a, a member of our community today, and what we were talking about was that, you know, how's, how's the team going to do this year? And I think one of the things that I sort of push back on is like, the point isn't winning, the point is meaningful success. Mm -hmm. So if a, if a young person or an adult yeah. has a meaningful success, which might be a loss mm -hmm. in a rowing event, similarly our staff can have meaningful successes at work that don't necessarily, we won't put a medal yeah. around their neck, but they may grow professionally yeah. and evolve. I so, mean, I hear what you're saying. I, yeah. I took winter training one time, or several times, but um, there was a guy who, who uh, was kind of a gruff, you know, sort of alpha male sort of guy, and he was running at the 5:30 program, and and for, I'd come regularly, and then I did, couldn't come for a, a while. I wasn't feeling good. And you know what he did? He called me. Oh, that's great. 
Yeah. Yeah. He said, "Are you okay?" Oh my gosh. I know. It's like. Oh. And you know, yeah. <laughs> he was, you know, I mean, he, his coaching style wasn't necessarily like, you know, what I would gravitate to. Yeah. I guess is the way yeah. to put it. Um, yeah. But just the humanity of that was really uh, meaningful. Yeah. I think the thing that we. I can't take credit for that. You know, I think that really is something that is built right. within the organ, the bones and the and the culture of the organization. And I think uh, one thing we know about culture is that it's incredibly delicate and it mm. needs to be fostered on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly try to support it as much as I can, yeah. and I try to embody and I try to I try to sort of um, what's the right role role model yeah, the type of leadership that yeah. I want to see from my from my directors yeah. and from my head coaches and from every person at CRI, but. But I can't tell a coach to do that because I didn't know you were out. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah, how right. do we how do we foster that? And how do we support it's it? It's the people and, you choose, and it's yeah. like all these intangible, undefinable factors yeah. that go into it. And it's you, know, a you real really trust. cared about how we did. You know, you really yeah. cared. So yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was clear. Anything else? Any other shout outs you want to give? And uh, oh, any uh, feedback from the convention? You know, are, are you presenting? I'm on a panel tomorrow, okay. um, and we're talking about inclusion in rowing. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, but no, I really, um, I really appreciate the fact that U.S. Rowing uh, put a lot of energy into bringing this event mm -hmm. uh, in person. Um, uh, is as uh, as challenging as it is to find a venue and uh, plan something in this day and age and actually have it come out and have it be successful. I, uh, we brought about 12 staff down to I Sierra know, I keep from seeing Sierra, Xavier yeah. from uh, Institute from for Rowing Leadership. Yeah, 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 we'll have a separate episode on that again. Okay. But I did, yeah. I talked to CB last year when yeah. you relaunched it, and yeah. it was really, uh, so Xavier is actually going to be coaching at uh, AB Crew. Oh, very good. Yeah. Oh, my God, that's yeah. your that's your stomping ground. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. my my, uh, my town. Yeah. So, yeah. well, thank you so much. Thank I'm you. I'm really glad we oh, could catch good to see up. You. And yeah. See you in person. Yes, you know, likewise. Yeah. <laughs> I was so pleased that you're here and we well, could connect. Um, it's an honor to be here. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. So we'll we'll wrap it up and we have a, a few more sessions tomorrow. We have Row New York. We have Calvin Coffee. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So everybody knows him and mm -hmm. it'll be fun. So we'll see you again tomorrow.